This week on the show, we have motivational guru, Ed Milet. Ed was named by Forbes 50 Under 50 Wealthiest People. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about understanding the importance of learning to be proud of yourself, whether that accomplishment is big or small. So often, we wait for others to validate our hard work or give us praise when we excel at something. But the reality is, rather than wait for other people to validate your hard work, it's important to be proud of yourself first and acknowledge how hard you've worked to attain your goals. Successful people celebrate their accomplishments, whether big or small, and aren't afraid to say the words, I'm proud of myself. By celebrating your victories, it gives you the confidence and motivation to continue to tackle more goals and experience that sense of pride that comes from seeing the fruits of your labor manifest. Make it your mission today to acknowledge your accomplishments and be proud of yourself when you tackle a goal you've made for yourself. Whether that goal is going to the gym, doing something out of your comfort zone, or waking up earlier, when you hit that goal, take time to acknowledge the hard work and dedication you took to make it happen. As Hal Allroad quotes, success is a process for all of us. And as long as you are making consistent progress towards your goals, sincerely giving your best effort more often than not, then you are already successful and deserve to feel proud of yourself. Stay tuned, coming up after the break. Ed, when did you decide you wanted to become an entrepreneur and what kind of steps did you take towards making it happen? Well, I knew what I didn't want. I watched my dad work so hard all of his life to build someone else's dream. Mm. And my dad, a lot of things in life are caught, not taught, right? Like mm. you just observe them. And I thought to myself, if I'm gonna work as hard as my dad's worked in his life, I'm gonna build my own life. And so really early on in my life, when I was a little boy, I had a little baseball card business, and I had an auto detailing business, and I always wanted to control my own future. But I was always afraid of it. I'm not a big risk taker, even to this day. I'm not someone who loves tons of you know chaos and stress in their life. But I did decide that I wanted to solve people's problems. I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to create. I'm a big believer that we're born to do something great with our lives, each one of us, in our own way. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have American entrepreneur, business person, motivational speaker, and business coach, Ed Milet. Ed has one of the top rated podcasts on iTunes and was listed on Forbes 50 Under 50 Wealthiest People. Ed, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. I'm glad we finally put this together. I've been looking forward to it. I'm so excited to have you on the show. I was telling you earlier, I'm a big fan of your work. I watch your videos regularly. Anytime I need motivation, I come on your page. So it's really exciting and an honor to have you today. <laughs> your honor is mine and I'm glad that from a distance I've been helping you. That makes me feel great because that's why I do it. Yeah, absolutely. So everyone knows you as this motivational guru, but let's take it back to the beginning. I know one of the first examples of showing you what it succeed, how to succeed in life was your dad. So let's let's talk about that and how he inspired you. Well, my dad, my, I believe people can change in their life because I watched my dad do it, my hero. My dad, my first 15 years of my life was an alcoholic and a drug addict. And um, so I spent a lot of time, you know, worrying about my dad and in a stressful environment. And then I watched my dad over time change and he got sober. And that's why I wrote the book, The Power of One More. I wrote this book because my dad had tried to get sober many times and then I finally watched him try one more time and he got sober. And then after he got sober, there was another theme. I'd say, Dad, are you gonna, you know, be sober the rest of your life? And he said, I don't know, I'm just gonna stay sober for one more day. And so it was these examples in my life of watching my dad change that made me believe that all people could change and all people could grow, including me. So I learned a lot of it from my dad. Wow, that's amazing that your dad was an inspiration. You saw him kind of go through the struggle and get through it. So I, I love that. that. That's actually very inspiring. Um, I know that in your mid-20s, you were a baseball player and your dream was to play baseball, but you got injured. So let's talk about that. And, and what did it teach you about yourself? Because that's a pretty 
difficult uh, pill to swallow? What a great question. So yeah, I was a baseball player. I always thought I was going to be a professional player. I don't know that I was good enough anyway. The injury maybe prematurely ended something that was going to end. <clears throat> However, what I did learn about myself was this, is that there's a danger in tying your identity, your worth to what you do. And so everything about me was I was a baseball player, you know. And so a lot of times what people do is they tie their identity to other things externally, what they do or who they're married to or their relationship or their money or whatever it might be, their degree. That's a really dangerous place to go. So I decided when baseball ended that if I was ever going to, you know, have self-worth again, that it was going to be an internal game. It was going to be about the kind of man I was, about the difference that I made and not what I did or an island I own now or a jet or... <laughs> tie it to those things, I think oftentimes that's a really dangerous place to be because what if you lose those things? What if the relationship ends, right? And so I learned that lesson young. It was one of the great blessings of having baseball and was never again would my worth be tied to what I do. Hmm, very interesting. I think that's so often we do that, right? We tie our worth or our identity to what we do um, and our occupation, but really life is so much more than that as well, right? <laughs> you know? Tie it to lots of external things. We can tie it to how many likes we get on Instagram, yeah. how many we get on a video, you know, how other people treat us is how we feel about ourselves. And mm -hmm. so that's a game you're going to lose because people aren't always going to be kind to you. And so I talk a lot in the book about your internal identity and I talk about how to change that. There's a chap the second chapter of my book's called The Matrix, where I teach you how to use your reticular activating system in your brain, which is a technical term, but it's basically just your life filter. And so like the matrix when you slow things down, right? If you've seen that movie, I just, a good example of it is I just bought a new Tesla. I didn't really want a Tesla, but I like what Musk has been doing. So I'm like, I'll get me a Tesla. <laughs> I gotta tell you now, everywhere I drive, I see Teslas. Mm. Red one, white one, three lanes over, other side of the freeway. Hey babe, there's a white Tesla. Here's the thing, those Teslas were always there. Mm. Now they've been filtered into my awareness because they're important to me. And so now I see them everywhere. So what if in life you could train yourself, the Teslas of your life become your goals, become your desires, become what you want in your life, become the emotions you want. And then you begin to see them. They've always been there. But the people, places, and things you need are there. So the premise of the book, The Power of One More, is really simple. It's this. You're a lot closer to the dreams of your life and your vision than you think you are. But because you think you're so far away, you behave in accordance with that belief system and you keep them far away. But the truth is, you're one decision away from a different life, one relationship, one meeting, one interview, mm -hmm. one book, one new thought, one new emotion away from completely changing your life. You've proven this. Look at how successful you are at such a young age. Oh, That's not just because you're lucky. That's because a series of decisions you made, one more thought, one more risk you took. It's also your willingness to do things you're afraid of doing that you're not mm -hmm. always perfectly prepared for, right? I have a yeah. chapter in the book called One More Inconvenience doing inconvenient things. And so we're much closer to the dream life we want than we think we are. And mm -hmm. I teach her in the book how to get it. Yeah, I love that you said that because it's so true. I, I believe that life is a projection of what's going on in your mind. And it's so true. Like you said, you saw Tesla's when you when you have a thought in your mind, it's just a manifestation life, right? So that's why it's so important to fill your mind with positive content and positive things, your dreams and goals. I really like that you said that. I think that's uh, I'd like to, I, I, I want to just second you on this because you're so successful and, and at such a young age. And here's one of the reasons why you are. And I want to compliment you on this there. I have a chapter in the book called Become an Impossibility thinker and a possibility achiever and here's what that means you just said it most people operate their thinking out of their memory and their history that's mm -hmm. what they think through and so they repeat their history over and over again different set of people different circumstances same results same emotions the key thing in life is to learn how to operate out of our imagination and our dreams this is a different frame of reference in our life and it's a muscle that we built when, you, when we're a little boy or a little girl we're three or four years old we're so happy. Why? One, we were just more recently with God. Mm -hmm. And two, we're in our imaginations all the time, in our dreams, because we don't have a history in a memory. Mm -hmm. And as we get older, by the time we're even 10 or 12 years old, we start to operate out of our, our memories and our history. Mm -hmm. And we repeat these patterns over and over again. So someone like yourself at some point said, I want to imagine a better life. Yeah. I want to have a television show. I want to have a radio show. I want people to hear me. I want to do something significant with my life. You had to first think it before you did it. Yeah. And the cool thing about having a thought. When you have a thought, just the thought creates a space in the world that didn't exist before you had the thought. Mm -hmm. It creates space. And now that that space exists, your being 
And if you believe in God, go to work together to furnish that space like a building with the people, places, and things required to make it real. Mm -hmm. So our mind moves towards what it's most familiar with. So if you're most familiar with your history or your memory or your problems or your worries or your fears, you will move towards them. But if you're most familiar, repeatedly thinking and conditioning yourself to think about what you want, what your dreams are, what your visions are, what emotions you want to have, you'll move towards those because it moves towards what it's most familiar with. Yeah, I completely agree with everything you're saying. Sometimes you also have to have a chat with yourself. I remember this weekend, I was at a huge red carpet gala. I haven't been at an event for two years. And when I first got there, I, I felt a little intimidated. And I, I went outside, I had a chat with myself saying, you know what, you can do this. You've got this, you are a pro in this industry. And I went in, I killed it, but it was because I had to have that chat with myself and break those, maybe those limiting beliefs that, you know, you have throughout your life or, you know, subconscious beliefs, right? Sometimes you got to have a chat and break those beliefs, right? Yeah, we have these unconscious beliefs and a lot of them were installed in our software and our brain when we were little kids and we're yeah. defenseless. Yeah. I'll give you a crazy little thing. My dad died last year and it's one of the reasons I wrote the book. And mm. My dad loved me. So usually these things are installed in us, these limiting beliefs, even by people who love us. Mm. And my dad would always say, when I would get off the phone with him, we'd talk about whatever and he'd go, okay, I love you. Be careful. Be careful. Yeah. He just would say it. Be careful. Be careful. He said this to me thousands of times. Yeah. Exactly what am I supposed to be careful of? And then he was just the same. But think about how that programs you. You're afraid. You walk into a red carpet. Mm. I gotta be careful. I don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to yeah. embarrass myself. I'm going on a podcast. I got to be careful. I'm going to a business meeting. I got to be careful. I'm going on my first date. I got to be careful. Yeah. What a terrible way to go through life. And it was just this little belief system he gave me as a little boy that's all the way up to a 51 year old man. He was still saying it to me. That's nonsense. So there are these limiting beliefs that sometimes you got to have a talk with yourself. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You got to have a talk with yourself and say, no, we're going to do it this way and then reprogram it, right? Yeah, that's 100%. <laughs> Ed, when did you decide you wanted to become an entrepreneur and what kind of steps did you take towards making it happen? Well, I knew what I didn't want. I watched my dad work so hard all of his life to build someone else's dream. Mm. And my dad, a lot of things in life are caught, not taught, right? Like mm. you just observe them. And I thought to myself, if I'm going to work as hard as my dad's worked in his life, I'm going to build my own life. And so really early on in my life, when I was a little boy, I had a little baseball card business and I had an auto detailing business and I always wanted to control my own future, but I was always afraid of it. I'm not a big risk taker, even to this day. I'm not someone who loves tons of you know chaos and stress in their life, but I did decide that I wanted to solve people's problems. I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to create. I'm a big believer that we're born to do something great with our lives, each one of us in our own way. And that we're not, the world, the culture today doesn't remind, Doing something great is reserved for the rich and famous. Mm. It's reserved for JLo, right? Yeah. We're doing something great is reserved for Beyonce or uh, you know some famous athlete, hockey player. You know they're supposed to do something great, but I'm average and ordinary. I'm not supposed to do something awesome. And mm. I have to tell you, my dad's decision to get sober that I mentioned earlier changed my family forever. Because not only did it change my life, I've I've reached millions of people because my dad made that decision. But here's the thing I would share with you that's pretty crazy. It occurred to me two weeks ago, after I wrote this book, someone helped my dad get sober. Mm -hmm. And I don't know who this person is, but this person changed my family forever and has changed millions of lives. And do you know what qualified them to help my dad? They were a drug addict and an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. Things they were most ashamed of, the things they were most embarrassed of, the greatest mistakes of their life, is what actually qualified that precious human being to help my precious father in his darkest moment somewhere. And I think often in life, so many of us feel like we're disqualified from being happy. We're disqualified for being successful. Who wants to listen to me? How could I help somebody? And the truth is, maybe this thing you're most ashamed of, this mess you have, this stuff that seems so average to you, or the mistakes you've made, that might be the very thing that qualifies you to change someone's life, just like it did the person who helped my dad. And I wrote The Power of One More to give you the tools of how to do it. Like really, it's a heavy book, a lot of strategies on time management and leadership and your brain and self-confidence and identity so that you can be that person in spite of the fact that right now you might not believe you are. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about your book, The Power of One More Time. You know, as you said, so many of us have these limiting beliefs 
and they think that success is reserved for people like Beyonce or someone else and it's not us but it really is meant for everyone if we believe it right it's really about belief so how does your book teach people to break their limiting beliefs and form new thoughts and ideas to go after yeah. what they want so there's a whole chapter on self-confidence. So the power of one more is the title of the book. There's a whole chapter. I, I teach the trilogy of self-confidence. So oh. in life, we don't really get our goals. Isn't that a, a bummer to hear? But the truth is we only get about 25% of our goals, but we will always get our standards, always get our standards eventually. So the question in life is what are your standards? I have a chapter in the book called One More Higher Standard, for example. And I'll give you an example of that. Most people that lack self-confidence, here's their issue. They don't keep the promises they make to themselves. Mm. They have a pattern and a history with themselves of not keeping the promises they make. And that's okay, I've been there. Mm. And so you have a reputation with yourself where you don't trust you. Mm. So if you want to build self-confidence, it's really simple. Start keeping the promises you make to yourself. I'm talking about what time I get up in the morning, if I make my bed, um, what time I work out, how much water I drink a day. You keep small promises, then you can beat be the big ones. But what if you change that standard and said, I don't just keep the promises I make to myself. I keep the promises I make to myself plus one more. So mm -hmm. I say I'm gonna do 10 minutes or 10 phone calls a day for my business, I do one more. If I'm gonna do 30 minutes on the treadmill, I do one more. If I'm gonna do 10 reps in the gym, I do one more. If I'm gonna tell my spouse I love them or my girlfriend I love them, or my boyfriend, I'm gonna tell them one more time a day. So when you change the standard, have a one more standard, you literally internally, as you said earlier, begin to change who you are. And so I go through 19 strategies, everywhere from leadership to how to have equanimity, to how to build confidence, how to change your identity, um, time management. I teach how to get three days in one day. There's a whole chapter on what I call mini days where you get 21 days a week and change your time. So it's never been a book written. I call it the ultimate guide to success and happiness. I believe it's the best book ever written on the topic. Hmm. And I, I say that, I'll just be honest with you. Most books I read are the same book. Yeah. All derivative of Think and Grow Rich, which is a great book. It's right here. It's one of the great books of all time. Most books are all that afterwards. This is different because here's the truth. You don't just think and get rich. Mm -hmm. You don't just think and get happy. There's things you have to do. And so what are the thoughts and what are the actions you need to take to change your life? And by the way, some of you need a life transformation. And some of you just need some small tweaks. You just want to take it a little bit ever. You just want to go a little bit higher. Right? Mm -hmm. So whatever it is, you want to go a little bit higher, a little bit further, or you want a whole transformation, the book, different chapters of the book will apply to some of you differently. Mm -hmm. I like that you said that when we don't keep promises to ourselves, we kind of lose confidence, right? And I know there's like personal victories when you do keep your promise to yourself, whether that's waking up earlier or working out, whatever it is, and you do it, you build that confidence, right? I think confidence comes, true confidence comes from really sticking to the things that you told yourself you would do, right? That's what yes. builds confidence. It's not really about yeah. money or status. It's, it's really people. simple. And it's it's okay that you don't have it. I've mm -hmm. been there. It's, sometimes we don't have confidence because maybe our parents didn't believe in us or, you know, we were bullied at school or we've had a divorce or, you know, there's mm -hmm. broke up with our boyfriend or girlfriend. So how, how do I rebuild myself? You rebuild yourself by starting to do exactly what you just said. Do what you say you're going to do. I mean, I do silly things to this day. I'm worth hundreds of millions of dollars. You know that I set my clothes out the night before I go to bed? Why do I do that? Because it's a promise I can keep. I can control that. I work out every day. I can control that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I get on my knees and pray every morning. I get my knees first. Why? Well, one, I like to pray. But two, it's something I can deliver on that seems so simple. But when you keep these little things that you think are so, what do I have right here? I have a gallon of water that I'm really behind on drinking today. But I empty this jug of water every day because it's a promise I can keep to myself. This stuff may seem really trivial and silly, but let me just tell everybody, I coach some of the top people in the world in every area, sports, entertainment, politics, and I'm one of them. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, what I work with them on is keeping the small promises they make to themselves. Self-confidence is a huge part of our lives and it's a very unknown thing. And so I teach them the standards of how to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think when you keep those promises to yourself, I think it's also important to celebrate these victories, whether small or big, right? Because I, I know when people say, I'm proud of myself, I'm not, I remember this weekend, I said, I told my sister, I'm like, I'm proud of myself. And sometimes it feels weird to say that, but when you're proud of yourself, then you can tackle more things, right? It gives you the motivation to tackle more stuff because you saw that um that act through to the end so you're, yeah you're brilliant by the way like I'm, you're oh. brilliant so <laughs> my book 
have a chapter called How to Develop Habits. And one of the things I talk about is when you're building a habit that's something you want to do, you have to celebrate the victory, even when it seems small. Because it, your brain then produces dopamine, and your brain goes, oh, I want to do this again, that feels good. If you just do something and you don't celebrate it, and you do it over and over again and you don't celebrate and enjoy it, your brain eventually goes, I don't want to do this anymore. So yeah. you're exactly right. There's a neurochemistry reason why. You should, it's called like, it's not good enough just to go do something. You have to go, hey, uh, credit here from putting it in the, in the uh, bank account of my life. I'm doing something other people aren't willing to do. So it's a huge thing to celebrate your victories. It's brilliant that you said that. It's actually in the brain how you build a habit. And again, I go through this whole chapter on how to do exactly what you just said because that is I got interviewed a hundred times for this book. No one's ever said that. That's exactly right. Yeah, that's actually the intro of my show today. I, I have to go through these things and then I write about it. And then <laughs> sometimes you have to go through it, right? And not not experience that. And then you're like, wait, if I just celebrate my victories, um, I'm going to be motivated to do more, right? <laughs> oh, a million percent, yes. And you know what people think? Oh, that's bragging or mm -hmm. or they all, oh, they'll do this. Really, that's not that big of a deal. You mean like I got up early? Wow. Yeah, wow. You'd be surprised how few people do that. Yeah. You'd be surprised. So yeah. these little things you think are so little are huge. Mm -hmm. and, and you're so focused and motivational. Have you always been a very focused and determined person? And did you ever have these limiting beliefs? And how did you get through that and kind of break into this, this new inspiring person? 100% <laughs> I've not always been this way. And the truth is that when you grow up the child in a dysfunctional family, and we a lot of us come from dysfunction. It could be alcohol, drugs, divorce. There wasn't enough hugging. You know, yeah. one way of one way of neglecting your children, if you're a parent, is don't pursue your own potential. Ooh, that's powerful. Don't chase your dreams. You're neglecting your children when you do that. You're showing them to be average and ordinary is okay. Mm -hmm. But no, in fact, I grew up with no self-esteem and no self-confidence. And I had to get into personal development and learn these things to be really honest just to be a baseline functioning person. Mm -hmm. But what happened was, once they started working, I'm like, well, hang on a minute. What if I took this to another level and another level? And I have to have habits and rituals and disciplines because I'm naturally pretty lazy. You leave me to my own <laughs> devices, man. I'm on, I'm on the couch <laughs> watching Netflix and eating Cheetos. Right? Like, I like sleep. You know, I, No, I have to train myself to be this way. And I say that with all the transparency in the world because I want to give people hope. If I was somehow superhuman, born like this, <laughs> you know, then that would be a hard thing to attain. But what if I'm just like you? Yeah. I actually say that in the first line of the book. I know you can change because I'm just like you. Yeah. So, no, I'm not motivated all the time. I have down days. If some people follow my social media, my Instagram. I post regularly. Hey, man, I'm off my game today. I'm down. I'm frustrated. You know? mm. So, absolutely not focused all the time, but I am focused. It's Here's the truth. It's not being motivated all the time that matters. It's what do you do on the days you're not motivated? Can mm -hmm. you still step up and do the right things on the days you're not feeling it? That's the separator. And I teach you how to do that in the book and I'm pretty good at that. I'm pretty good at that. Yeah, absolutely. I think sometimes you have to be your own life coach, right? You have to coach yourself <laughs> and, and just as, have that talk with yourself and just do it. Overthinking, I noticed overthinking is the worst thing, right? Is when you overthink it. I think Nike had something happening there when they said just do it. Because sometimes when you just do it, you don't overthink it. it. It's the best way to get something done, right? Yeah, you're a million percent right. You know what people think? They think they have to know everything before they take action. Mm -hmm. They think they have to over be prepared. And the truth is this, you got to take a step into the unknown. Yeah. You know, no, no one's coming to save you. Yeah. And the people that do things in life, do them before they think they're ready. And the people that don't ever get around to it are constantly waiting to get, waiting to get, waiting to get ready. And you're never gonna be completely ready. That's just the truth. I'm gonna wait forever until it's perfect when I get married. I'm gonna wait forever until I start a business. I'm gonna wait forever until I work out. I'm gonna wait forever until I start reading the book. Keep waiting. The truth is you gotta take steps into the unknown, have some faith, step in there boldly, and then when you get there, figure it out. It's so true. When I got into this industry, I had no idea what I was doing. I just faked it till I made it. And I literally, but I learned things, right? You learn things along the way. And I feel like that gives you confidence because you learn life skills when you just are thrown into something and you have to learn, right? You know what you're going to figure out when you're, you already know this, but I'll give everyone, I'll save everyone time. I'm 51 years old. <laughs> nobody knows everything. Yeah. Nobody, nobody knows much. And most people are faking it. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about some of the top people in the world. They're just faking it. And by the way, faking it until you make it just means I'm going to step into this space boldly. 
I'm willing to make mistakes. I'm willing to embarrass myself. I have a chapter in the book called One More Inconvenience. Let me mm-hmm. tell you what that means. Be willing to do inconvenient things. Be willing to be willing to sub, to change your relationship with pain. Mm-hmm. And here's the truth. On the other side of whatever pain you're going through, Napoleon Hill says this, on the other side of this temporary pain you're going to go through, you get introduced to your other self, mm-hmm. this other That's person. Nice. And you you realize this, right? You're not the same person you were five years ago. No. <laughs> difficult, inconvenient, even painful things. And so I've built the muscle in my life of what's the easy thing to do? I don't want the path of least resistance. I want the path of most resistance because through the path of most resistance, doing difficult, inconvenient things, I get introduced to another version of me. And that other version of me produces another life. And that's really the journey that you're on. That's why now you can sit here so confidently and be a pro at what you do. But I guarantee you, if I watch the first interview you did, you're better now than you were then, right? Oh yeah. (laughs) And that's just true in everything in our lives. We have to be willing to not be perfect. Perfection is actually the lowest possible standard you could have. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a perfectionist. Well, you need to stop that crap. Because being a perfectionist is the lowest standard possible because it's unreachable and you use perfection as an excuse not to take action. Yeah. And so I'm willing to make moves that are imperfect to make progress. Let me say this lastly to you about that. I have a chapter in the book about making invisible progress. I use the analogy of a pinata. You know what a pinata is when mm-hmm. you go to these parties mm-hmm. and get the pinata? Yeah. yeah. I went to a five year old's birthday party about it, right before I wrote the book. This first kid gets up, he's whacking the pinata, no candy comes out. Next kid gets up, hits it, no candy comes out. About 10 kids hit this pinata. Basically, well, most of them quit because no candy was coming out. It looked like they weren't breaking the pinata down, but we all know it was the cumulative blows hitting the pinata that was making that thing break, even though you couldn't see it. The last kid gets up, hits it one time, bam, it breaks open, all the candy comes out, everybody celebrates. Mm -hmm. Was it the last shot that broke the pinata or was it all of those shots that took the pinata? We all know the answer, it was all of them. But in life, just like the pinata, it doesn't feel like we're making progress a lot of times when we're taking our swings. Mm -hmm. And so most people quit before all the candy comes out of their business. The candy comes out of their career. The candy comes out of their relationship, they quit before all the candy comes out because the, if progress is invisible and they don't think they're making any, but there's something called compound pounding. You are making more progress than you think you are, even if it's invisible. Mm-hmm. And as you know what, it's the power of one more time, really, because sometimes it's just that one extra time after a hundred times that you've tried and you try one more time that you succeed, right? It's you, just, that- you, just, you just explained my book. Right? <laughs> That's exactly right. You're 100% right. And Ed, you were named by Forbes 50 under 50 wealthiest people, and you have a net worth of over $450 million. So what does success truly mean to you? Success to me is when whatever the vision for your life is, you produce it. Mm. So, and you use your giftedness in the service of other people. So I have a sister, my middle sister is equally successful as I am, and she doesn't have $450. (laughs) She's a, she's a Christian school teacher, fourth grade, mm. and uh, she's blind. Mm. She lost her vision. She was born with diabetes. She can't drive. No. She can't even grade the papers. But my sister's vision for her life was to teach children, and she's living it, and she's good at it, and she uses her gifts in the service of others. My sister's gifts are her kindness, her patience, her ability to teach, her height. She's mm. fourth foot eleven, so she's yeah. the same height as all of her students, right? Yeah. yeah. My sister's successful because her blueprint, her vision of her life is the one she has. Mm -hmm. So success isn't hundreds of millions of dollars, but it can be if that's what you want. Mm -hmm. Success doesn't have to be anything. Success has to be what your dream is, your vision for your life, and then you go make it happen. And the way you make it happen is you figure out what the two or three gifts are that you have. You be your humor, your intellect, your persuasive abilities, your communication ability, your listening skills, your problem solving, your kindness, your relentlessness, your resiliency. I don't know what they are for you, you have them. And then you use those in the service of other people. Mm. You get them for your life, you make that life happen. You're successful no matter what it is. Yeah, absolutely. I like that you said of service to other people. I think that's so important because anyone that's of service to the world always becomes successful because it's not just about us, right? It's about helping other people as well. So I like that. It it may be just one person you're helping, like that person who helped my dad, right? It doesn't have to be on Instagram. It doesn't have to be on TV. It doesn't have to be on the radio. It doesn't have to be anywhere. Mm -hmm. It just has to be that you you intend. Start to take more of your confidence from your intentions. 
more of your more of your belief in your intentions to do well, and you'll be a much happier person. Focus on your intentions. And I always like to end the show with some inspiration. So for our viewers or anyone watching this, going through a difficult time, um, just they keep trying, they're not seeing their dreams manifest, they're maybe discouraged or at the end of their road, what would you say to encourage and inspire them? I would say don't quit for one more day. Just don't quit one more day. Yeah. Like my dad did, my dad tried to get sober one more time. And in my life and business, I've many times I've wanted to quit and I just go, you know what? I'm not going to quit for today. Mm -hmm. My dad always tell me, I'm just not going to drink for today. And the other thing I will just remind you, whatever you're going through is temporary. Please don't make a permanent decision based on a temporary situation. Mm -hmm. Please don't do that. And the last reminder is, and this may seem hokey, but I want you to hear me or see me. You, you, precious you, yeah, you, who thinks I'm not talking to you. You, you were born to do something great with your life. You deserve to be happy. You're not invisible. You matter. You're important. And if you can just hold on to that belief and hold on to the fact that you're a good person who intends to serve, and that you deserve to be successful, you deserve to be happy, mm -hmm. and that yes, you were born to do something great in big ways and in small ways. Maybe that greatness is just today you reach out to a friend and say, hey, I miss you. I love you. Everything okay? Mm -hmm. That's greatness. That's greatness. And so you were born to do something awesome with your life. And I'd be honored if you get the power of one more because I believe I could help you do it. Mm -hmm. I didn't write the book for money, that's for sure. There's no money in writing a book. And I have enough of that already. I wrote the book for you because I believe what I just said to you. And I think I can help you make all of that a reality. Maybe better than any book you've read before if you go grab it. So I hope everyone goes and gets the book. Yeah, I'll, it sounds like an amazing book. I'm very excited to read it. I'm going to get it today. <laughs> I, I love reading and I love how it opens your mind to new possibilities. So I'm excited for this book. Thank you so much, Ed, for being on the show today, for being a beacon of hope for so many people. I love your content. Keep it up. And yeah, hopefully we get to meet some time in person. <laughs> I'm in Canada all the time. I'm looking forward to that. I think you're absolutely spectacular. Oh, and you, you inspire so people. Too. So I wish you continued success. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook. Hey, you can fly higher than the sky.